This is the North Glen neighborhood in Andover. Like most neighborhoods in Andover, because of the school district, it's desirable. So naturally it attracts bidding wars. In fact, of the 11 homes that sold in this neighborhood in the last 12 months, at least seven sales were bidding wars with multiple offers. But we're not here to talk about those seven bidding wars. We're here to talk about the fact that almost half of all sales in the North Glen neighborhood during the last 12 months were to corporate owners, including one of the largest corporate landlords in the country. So if you lost out on an offer in this neighborhood last year, there's a one in two chance that you lost out to a corporate buyer. In fact, in the last 12 months in Andover, there have been 40 sales of residential properties to corporations. Here on 139th Lane, Home Partners of America and High Opportunity Neighborhood Partners bought four houses in the last year, including two right across the street from each other. Here in Maple Grove, corporations bought 69 homes in the last 12 months. And while most of the LLCs are small local landlords, High Opportunity Neighborhood Partners bought 15 homes and Home Partners of America bought 13. This is Berkshire Lane. Four of the 12 houses on this street sold in the last 12 months went to corporations. All four received multiple offers. Before we go any further, I want to be clear that I'm not disparaging the business practice of these corporations. I'm just providing information because they are playing a greater role in today's real estate market. I also think that with inventory at an all-time low, buyers who lose out to them are right to be frustrated. And I think that the method by which corporate buyers win bidding wars is contributing to a runaway effect on home prices. But to understand that, we need to talk about appraisals. Most buyers purchase their homes with financing, and that financing almost always comes with a requirement for an appraisal. This means that even though you might be willing to pay $500,000 for a house, if an appraisal comes back and says that the home is only worth $475,000, the bank is going to treat the loan they give you as if it's for a $475,000 home. You're going to need to come up with the difference in cash or renegotiate the price with the sellers. So if your bank agreed to finance 90% of the value of the home, you might have been planning on borrowing $450,000 when you thought it was worth $500,000. If the appraisal comes back and says the house is only worth $475, the bank's 90% share is only $427,500. And if the seller won't come down to meet you at the appraised price, you'll need to come up with the balance or cancel the purchase. Appraisals rely heavily on recent comparable sales. So if house A over here sells for $400,000 and your house B over here is going on the market in the next month and you have similar room count, similar size, similar types of finishings, the appraiser is going to say that your house is also worth $400,000. But when a big cash buyer like Home Partners of America puts in an offer, there is no official appraisal involved. So they can outbid all other offers and not worry about an appraisal putting a damper on things. The repercussion of the sale is that it creates a new comparable sale in the neighborhood and clears the way for the next round of listings to price higher knowing that there's at least one comparable to justify that higher price. Let's talk about who the big players are in the corporate landlord purchases. In Andover, Blaine, and Maple Grove, High Opportunity Neighborhood Partners has been on a buying spree during the last 12 months. They've purchased at least 86 properties. Their stated mission is honorable, to open up single family rentals in high opportunity neighborhoods to Section 8 Housing Choice voucher recipients. In line with research from Harvard University's Opportunity Insights, the claims that breaking the cycle of poverty and closing the income gap greatly depends on where the low-income American happens to grow up. Again, I want to be clear that I'm not making a judgment call here. I'm simply providing information on the new forces that are shaping our local real estate market. The other major corporate landlord buying homes in the Twin Cities is Home Partners of America, one of the largest in the country. They own more than 17,000 homes nationwide. Last year, they were acquired by the Blackstone Group, a giant investment management company with more than $41 billion in assets. They've purchased roughly 200 homes in the Twin Cities during the last 12 months and own around 1,300 total here. Again, they have a noble mission to facilitate the dream of home ownership for those who need alternative financing through a rent-to-own arrangement. However, their purchasing power gives them an advantage over conventional home buyers. Having been on the receiving end of an offer by home partners, I can attest that they are difficult for sellers to turn down. So if you find yourself in a multiple offer situation in the $350,000 to $500,000 price range, which is where these large corporate buyers tend to buy, how do you stand a chance of competing? The answer is to make your offer as clean as possible. And to be clear, that doesn't mean waiving your right to an inspection. 
though you can tell sellers that you're not going to nickel and dime them over Meyer findings by making it pass fail. After all, the corporate offers that I've seen have included inspection contingencies, and I don't think your right to inspect is one that you should give up unless you're an experienced investor or a contractor who can handle whatever dirty little secrets a house may be hiding. However, in a bidding war, don't expect the sellers to cover any of your closing costs. Don't expect them to wait for you to sell your current home, and if you can, offer to cover some or all of an appraisal shortfall. Offer to be as flexible on the closing date as the sellers need. There's a popular trend in message boards that says if you write the sellers a love letter about how you were a young family buying your first home and how you fell in love with the seller's home, and that you can envision your children opening Christmas presents in front of the fireplace, that sellers will forego a higher offer and sell you the house based on your letter. And while these letters do occasionally help and there are anecdotal stories about people winning their offers because of them, we need to be honest about them. The truth is, a lot of agents recommend their buyers write these love letters to feel like they have some kind of control over what feels like a random process. However, a growing number of listing agents won't even give these love letters to their sellers because it could open them up to fair housing complaints by revealing information about a buyer's protective status. In the example I used, a young family picturing their children opening Christmas presents, the love letter revealed not only the buyer's familial status, but also their religion, both of which cannot be discriminated against under the fair housing rules. I'm not saying that sellers are going to discriminate against buyers based on their protected status, but it can certainly appear to a losing buyer that they might have. What if a seller receives multiple love letters, one saying they can picture their children opening Christmas presents, and others saying they can picture themselves breaking their fast during Ramadan in the large dining room or hosting a Passover Seder? Could one set of buyers allege that they were discriminated against based on their religion if another offer is chosen? These are among the reasons why the official position of the National Association of Realtors is that buyer love letters should not be presented to sellers, and why some agent notes on the MLS state that offers with love letters will be rejected. All that being said, your agent should make it clear when submitting your offer that the buyers are planning to use the home as a primary residence for themselves. Sellers are free to reject offers from non-owner occupants. The truth is you can win against these corporate buyers. They're not winning 100% of the offers they make and they're not offering on 100% of the properties available. So keep the fight up, keep looking, and good luck.